In this video, we're going to create our first interactive program. I'm going to take a copy of this file. I'm always going to be doing that, or almost always, when I create a new program. I'm going to save this. I'll just do it by using File and Save As this time. And we'll call it interactive.py. OK, so using interactive.py here, the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to change this program a little bit to get rid of world. Let's get rid of world here. And I want to create a new variable, which I'll call name and set that equal to some name like Joe, for example. So what I what I type here is is just stuff I've made up. There's nothing special about it. But notice that variable names like these, they don't go in quotes. The thing that goes in quotes is just text, literal text, like these strings here. Now, supposing I want to output all of this on a single line. Here's one way to do it. I can type greeting, comma, name, comma, question. And if we run this, we see all that text on one single line. However, I'm going to suggest that for the moment you forget that you've seen this. So this, this does work. We've just got the variables or strings separated by commas between the two round brackets of the print function. But I think if we do it another way, it'll help you better to learn how to work with variables. So I'm going to do, it, do this a different way. Instead of commas, I'm going to separate these with plus signs. Now, when we use plus signs with a string on either side, so these are string variables, yes, but we can use them wherever we might otherwise use a string, then it basically performs concatenation, in other words, joining together. So in this context, we call things like plus and equals operators. And in this context, this is a concatenation operator for joining strings together. And if we try this out, it works. It is even worse than using commas because we've lost some spaces here. But you can see it basically joins these strings together via the variables and outputs them. Now let's try to format this a bit more nicely. We want some spaces and punctuation in there. So I can actually put spaces inside strings. So I could put a space here. As long as it's within these quotes, then we're fine. And if I run this, now you see a space after hello. We probably want a full stop after hello Joe as well. To do that, I'm just going to add in a string literal. So let's put in quotes a dot and a space and another quote. And then I need another plus sign here. So I'm joining together four different strings here. Three of them I'm referring to with variables, and the other one is a string literal. We can mix and match like that. They all behave just like string literals, basically. If I run that, we have some pretty nicely formatted text. So you, you're definitely going to want to try this out, because if it does seem at all confusing or mysterious now, which would be normal if you are an absolute beginner, it will stop seeming confusing if you just practice doing this a bit. Now, the reason I separated out name here is because I want to get that from the user. I want the user to enter their own name to tell me what their name is. And I want to output that in this text. So to do that, firstly, I'm going to go above where I create the name variable. And I'm going to say, let's print a prompt. So let's say, enter your name, colon, maybe a space. And how do I collect what the user enters on the terminal, I can do it like this. Instead of saying name equals Joe, so I'm assigning the value of this string literal, Joe, to this variable name. Instead of doing that, I can type input and an open and close round bracket. So this is what we call the input function. And the round brackets there clue you in that it is a function. In other words, it's some code that's going to do something. It's not just another variable or something. 
Let's maybe try to arrange this a bit nicely to help us understand the program better. Now let's run this and see what it does. So I run it and it says, enter your name. And let's enter John, which is my name. And it says, hello, John, how are you? So now we've got a program that's actually interactive. Try this out for yourself. So you wanna definitely type this out and see if you can change it to do something maybe a little bit different. It is normal to feel confused at this stage, but the answer to confusion here is, is always gonna be practice. And by the end of this course, if you follow it all the way through and you practice, honestly, the whole idea of variables and string literals and functions and all this stuff and much, much more besides is gonna seem like second nature to you. This is a free video from my course, Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners. I'm releasing the first couple of chapters of this course completely for free on YouTube to get you started with Python. I plan to upload new videos here to YouTube every Monday and every Thursday for at least a couple of months. If you're interested in the complete course, which teaches you Python from scratch and eventually progresses to things like creating graphical user interfaces and using neural networks, principal component analysis, cluster analysis, all that stuff, and much more besides. Then you can find a link in the description or just go to this URL on the screen right here. If you finish the whole course, you'll be able to write all kinds of general purpose programs in Python and use Python to do machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy coding.